you you thought we cannot continue. <laughs> okay. Well, you can. I mean, unless you're having a a weird conversation, I think you can. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Um, here we are once again. Um, so today is our third class of this week. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, this week we are going to be having classes until Friday. So just, to, just so you guys keep that in mind. Um, so for tonight, well, we are going to be talking, um, wrap up actually the, the topic of verbs of belief. That's the first thing that we have to get out of the way. Then we're going to be talking about um, defining and non-defining relative classes because, well, of course, we have to um, learn how to um, use these defining and non-defining regular classes. Um, they are Wait. very yes. common when yes, sir. you yes, sir. read, for example, if you see. I have a um, problem with the relative clause. Mm -hmm. I, I can so do I. Yes, I, I, I understand, but I'll and uh, time to do the exercise I can't I don't know es cierto hoy temprano estaba revisando fíjense que estaba revisando eso porque anoche me quedé con el pendiente que Sandra me pidió ayuda ahorita yes. voy a empezar a cargar desde ya la plataforma porque no sé la vez pasada creo que les pregunté no sé si a ustedes que la plataforma me tarda un montón en, en cargar yes, me too, me too. ah yeah. ok yo me asusté yo creí que era conmigo la cosa yo dije ¿qué pasó? pero se tarda un montón entonces eh, la voy a poner a cargar desde ya para poder trabajar en eso también hoy. Sí, porque yo sé que es, es, oh es, es importante. Pero bueno, um, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how to use them properly. We already know that the platform has some issues. You know, it's going through um, a rough time right now, I think. But yeah, we are going to get through this together. Um, okay, so those are part of what we are going to be doing. But tonight, we are actually going to go back to having a question. You know, as we are very used to doing, we're going to have uh, um, the question. And the question for tonight is very simple. I just want to know, what is your favorite aspect about your city? So, you know, the city you live in, right? So, what is your favorite thing about your city? Is it, um, I don't know, maybe that it has many... Um, <laughs> clinics maybe that um i don't know it it is close to other cities around it uh, maybe you like the park that uh, is in your city any detail any specific thing that you may like about the city you live in so um that is the question for today what is one of your favorite aspects or your favorite characteristic about your city and uh, we are actually going to be getting started with it um with Jenny, so tell me, Jenny, what is your favorite thing about your city? Jenny Campos. Oh, I there like, we go. I, like, I okay. like the architecture of the house. Uh, and uh, is the city the very clean? Uh, is is this is is I there are very history history mm -hmm. and I like the well, the people oh, <laughs> the people okay. that be live in the city okay. that are. Cool, very cool. So you like the architecture. You like uh, the fact that it is a clean city. You also like the history that the city yeah. has. And also you like the people that live in the city. That is very interesting, very nice. Good, good, good. Okay, great. Um, next one up, we are going to hear from Janet. Esto sí no la hemos escuchado, así que we're going to hear from you today, Janet. So tell me, um, what is your favorite aspect about the city you live in? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, I like from a city that this, it's really beautiful, I think. Um, <laughs> we And we have many things near from, uh, for, for example, from a, from a house, 
I have uh, uh, moles. Mm -hmm. I have uh, super um, markets. Mm -hmm. um, I have also stadiums and parks. I have I, I have really near my church from my from my from my house mm -hmm. and all is in, in the same place. Okay, very good. So it seems that uh, you know sometimes we have those conveniences. We just get used to the fact of having them that close, right? Because um, well, in my case, there is a visit that I have almost every year. And it is a visit to Guatemala because I have one aunt who has a house in Guatemala. And uh, I think I have told you guys before the, how my house is arranged, you know, how uh, all the spaces are around my house. But it's basically the same as you. Not, or maybe just leaving aside um, big shopping malls and uh, stadiums because I don't really have a stadiums close by. I have a soccer field like um, two blocks away from my house. But I do not have a stadium um, close to my house. But um, cities, when when there is like convenience, because that's how we can refer to the fact that we have things close by. O sea, básicamente la, la forma más apropiada de decirlo sería así, ¿verdad? Convenience. So when we have convenience in a city, we get so used to it that when we go to other cities that don't have stores, that don't have... Um, a park or things close by we just feel lost so yeah i can imagine that you know having all those conveniences around you makes you feel like the city is very nice so very cool yeah those details having those conveniences close by is just great you know when when you live close to a city all right uh moving on how about um walter how is valentine's walter I was doing great, teacher, but okay. I have a, I, 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 I problems. Uh, I went to my wife to dinner yesterday uh -huh. around 6, 6 p.m. And when I come back, I thought about uh, attend a time, attend on time of class. Uh -huh. My car broke it down. Yeah. I yeah. Happened. I don't know. I was happened. I was gonna tell you. I was I was gonna try to guess, and I was gonna tell you your car broke, because that happens. Yeah. When I arrived to my home, it's so late to enter to class. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Aquí yeah. estaba aquí estaba Sandra diciendo. A mí me dijo que no quería entrar. Dijo Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> que le valía, dijo. That's not true. Come on. <laughs> Yo no sé. That's what they say. And they call themselves your classmates, you see. Oh. But yeah. <laughs> no, but that's great. Now, tell me, Walter, about Santa Ana. What is one of your favorite things uh, about your city? Yeah, um, Santa Ana city, uh, one of the aspects important to me live here is the life at night. For example, in main uh, central park, for example, mm -hmm. is open. It's open, and if you try to stay, wake up, uh, to take a decision to go to the to the central park, you find a lot of a lot of little business about Mexican food open twenty four hours. Yeah, tortas, tortas mexicanas yeah, all over the good. place. It's good. Yeah, it's good. And another things like uh, a mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though you can find uh, uh, several discotheque or restaurants or restaurant, yeah, yeah, it's good. Because me and my family, actually, the secure, secure. I don't know, it's for right now. It's good right now. Yeah, the thing is that um, you know, for us, it's like. My family and I, we had the chance to go. I think I told you that before that we went to to Santa Ana uh, at the beginning of January, and uh, we were surprised because here, for example, I mean the biggest city close to to where I live is Usulután. So I don't mm -hmm. have El Tránsito is a nice city, yes, but it's not a big city. Like for example, we only have uh, one taqueria, we have uh, two tortas vendors. 
And there is like, like, like big restaurants. We have a Pollo Campestre. Yes, we have a Super Selectos. We have a Despensa Familiar. But there is not like, like something that is very specific about our city. Something that has also become a surprise in the last few months is uh, Uno uh, gas station. We have yeah. an Uno and it's open 24-7. So it's like, for us, that's so cool. Hey there. So for us, that's so cool that we have, uh, you know, that Uno close by. But in Usulutan, they have a restaurant uh, named uh, Coche Bomba. So it's supposed to be open from 10 a.m. until 2 a.m. You know, from 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. So it's it's open till very, very late. Um, but... Yeah, that's basically like the only one because the, the rest of them are not restaurants. You know, there are some vendors, yes, but they're uh, street vendors, like the ones that you guys have in, in Santa Ana close to the park, you know, the ones who sell yeah. tortas. Um, yeah. But there was there were actually some great restaurants open very late because we were trying to have dinner around 10 p.m. And it was open and we were like very surprised because, yeah, the city looked so alive. And, you yeah. know, here in El Transito, it happens, but it only happens for Christmas time. Like after oh. Christmas, it all goes back to just being lonely. After 10, after 9 p.m., it's super, super lonely. Uh, but in Santa Ana, it was 11 p.m. and it was crowded. Like the park was packed. And I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. <laughs> because there were people selling a tolchuco with beans, yeah. which is very weird yeah. for me because we don't have it like that here in, in, in Oriente. But it was very weird for me like that. Um, <laughs> but I mean, a lot of people. So yeah, if you guys haven't been to Santa Ana late at night, go. Y vayan yeah. a comer donde, donde Walter también. Ahí exactly. Ven, uh -huh. Welcome. Ven, ven comida, <laughs> comida típica. Pero yeah. sí, yes, please, yes, please. Santa Ana <laughs> es una de esas ciudades. A mí, la verdad, a mí me sorprendió. O sea, porque. Como les digo, en mi ciudad es normal. Para los días de Navidad, sí es normal que se vea gente, está decorado y así va. Pero, o sea, ese día me acuerdo, creo que era una cosa de break dance que había. Y también había unos, unos, unos cantantes, unos grupos, o sea, un montón de cosas. Y yo como, ¿qué? O sea, porque he vivido Santa Ana varias veces, sobre todo para la, para la feria, porque en esos días cumplo años yo. Entonces, es como el regalo que me dan siempre. Anda, Santa Ana. O, o sea, es tipo, de la iglesia... A ver, a ver, a ver, a ver. Sí, de, de la iglesia va, va a haber, este, ¿cómo se llama? Excursión en Alte para Santana. Entonces, <risa> that's the gift. Este año voy a ir a comer, a, a desayunar allá donde, donde Walter. Ok, pues, pues <risa> uh, yeah, I mean, Santana is, has, is a city that I have been to many times, but yeah. mostly around, you know, their, their, um, their festivities. Um, yeah. But it was really surprising. So if you guys want to see a good, a nice city, you know, a uh, classic looking city, Santa Ana is, is a nice place to go to. Okay. Um, so, uh, después de haberle, de, haber, de haberle hecho la, la, el favor publicitario aquí a Santa Ana por 20 minutos, uh, Lourdes, what do you think, Lourdes? How about you? How about your city? What is one thing that you like about your city? <laughs> Only one thing. No, <laughs> I was I mean, hoping... <laughs> you mentioned many aspects. I was hoping you didn't ask me. I live in Soyapango. <laughs> I will try it. <laughs> um, well, maybe in my neighborhood, I like it because I I live in a, in a position or a vacation, I don't know, location. Yeah. Location. Um, that I can walk like 20 minutes and I'm in Plaza Mundo. I can walk. 10 minutes and I am like near Unicentro. Um, I can go walking to everywhere. Um, and yes, and you can find in recent years, uh, my area has become more, more commercial. Mm -hmm. um, there are more stores, and more restaurants. So you don't have to, to take the bus and go to the traffic. You, you yeah. can just walk um, and there is a there is a beautiful mall that opened like two years ago. I don't know if you heard about uh, Paseo Venecia. I did. I did hear about it. I haven't <laughs> been, but I have heard about it. Oh, that that's why it's, it's really beautiful and it has like everything there. And it's even near to the supermarket. So it's it's very it's very nice. Yeah, I think 
that is the thing I, I like about here. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. You know, I have to be honest. I honestly, I guys, I don't want to hurt any feelings. Okay. If I have more people from Soyapango, um, but I get scared. As soon as I hear <laughs> about Soyapango, I get scared. I remember when I graduated, I had to go to um, Ministerio de Educación to, to get some papers and some documents so I would um, certify my title. And I remember me taking a taxi and going to the bus station that uh, um, you know has buses to come back here to San Miguel. And I was so scared when the taxi driver told me, so yeah, right now we're entering Soya. And I was like, oh, that, that was around 2019, like um, January 2019. And uh, yeah, I felt threatened, to be honest. Um, so I have never been, I have actually never left a car, you know, when, when I'm driving or riding through Soyapango, I only go through it, but I never um, stop. But I mean, right now, I think we are in a safer position as a country. I think we are like doing better um, because the other day I went through Soya once again and yeah, it was horrible because of the traffic, but the people looked nice, you know, people were smiling and I didn't really feel like it was that anything bad was going to happen to me. Um, so yeah, I think it's about time, you know, to give Soya a try because I have been to many places. I've been to Apopa, which was also, you know, one of those. Um, but yeah, in Soya, I have always been scared, um, but cool. And, you know, once again, very similar to what we were mentioning with Janet, that it is convenience. You know, you have many, many things around you. You can get to places by walking and uh, you can save yourself from the struggle of going through traffic. So very cool. Nice. Moving on. How about you, Roberto? Roberto Guevara, tell me, what is one of your favorite aspects about your city? Hi, good evening. Uh, the, in my city, I like is is very quiet. It's mm -hmm. it's very safe. When you to work ten p.m. twelve a.m. in it's very it's very safe. It, it's a private. Okay, but cool. it's very very safe. Yeah, it's nice. You know, feeling that cozy environment when you feel safe walking when you feel safe riding the bike i think it's something nice um there is something that just came to my mind is a, a memory that i have and uh it's one moment i don't know if you guys have these this um daydreaming things you know when you just remember something like if you're doing it right now it happens to me quite often um I remember one night when I was still living in the in the U.S. Um, so the first part of my stay was like in a crowded neighborhood. So there was a lot of people, middle class people, if we can call it that. Um, so yeah, it was it was like a lot of neighbors. There was a lot of people around. But then I had to move and spend some time with a new family, and that family was rich. They were actually rich. Um, so the people around there were basically or rich you know the houses were big the spaces were big and uh, my co-workers or my co-interns because they were also interns from spain um they moved to areas similar to where i had moved um so one of them lived like 10 minutes away from my house by car um and one night we decided to watch a movie together and we were like the best friends in between the group. We were like the ones who got along better. Um, so we decided to watch a movie. I arrived to her house. I mean, I uh, was dropped off the bus around 4.30 at my house or the house. Um, so I took the bike and went to her house. And uh, I mean, when I got there, it was still sunny. You know, it was sunny. It was, it was, it was nice. Um, but... We watched, I think it was one of uh, Star Wars movies, but it was, it was a long movie. It was not a short movie. It was, it was something like around three hours. And I remember that the movie ended around 8.30 p.m. And uh, all I had was my bike. So the family started offering to take me back. You know, they were telling me like, no, it's, it's not going to be safe if you, if you ride a bike at night, like this late at night. And I decided to go for it. I was like, nah, 
I want to I want to get home by bike. And I did. And it was just so nice. I remember how great it felt because I was going through um o sea, de verdad les juro que cuando me acuerdo de eso siento como si era una película, o sea, como si ven en las películas que van, o sea, en medio de de casas de o sea, mansiones, o sea, no casas, sino mansiones. Entonces yo como que Ah, it was just cool. Y desde ese día en adelante, ya nadie me paraba de salir en bicicleta. O sea, iba al mall, iba todo en bicicleta. Ahí alrededor, o sea, había lugares así porque era una, una zona, o sea, bien um, exclusiva y como caro donde, donde estaba. Entonces, nadie me paraba. O sea, yo pasaba y después fue convenciendo a otros y a otros y a otros. Y así, o sea, con mis amigos que hice yo ahí, me veía casi siempre en el mismo lugar, pero en bicicleta. Íbamos por un helado en bicicleta. Entonces, y fue como que, ajá, a la familia le pareció interesante porque decían que no esperaban que, que yo fuese a hacer así como que a salir solo, o sea, porque ellos pensaban que les iba a costar, pues que iban a tener que andarme llevando y trayendo y que no sé qué. But I have never liked to be like that. I always want um, to be independent, you know, to get along or to get around by myself. Um, so yeah, it was something very nice to do. And the same as you mentioned, Roberto, it was a very peaceful um, environment. I felt welcome however it was very cold because it was still minnesota it was still um cold as hell but yeah it was it was a very nice experience were you at beverly hills teacher no that was that was in um in minnesota <laughs> oh minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was in minnesota but no i actually if i'm to be honest i went to beverly i didn't like it <laughs> I didn't like it at all. All the houses in Beverly Hills, they look so ugly and old and dirty. You know? Ooh. Yeah. Just imagine like you have a house and uh, you have a tamarindo tree right in front of your house. And you don't you don't um like clean the, the, the yard in two months. So that's Beverly. That's how I felt at least in oh. Beverly. There were no nice houses, like oh, no nice houses. It, they say that Beverly has still the fame of being an exclusive neighborhood, but it is not the same as it used to. And that is why if you guys uh, watch any movies or any any um, fashion things, you see that people who are rich and famous, they mm -hmm. don't live in Beverly. Normally, they live uh -huh. in other places. For example, the Kardashians, they live close to Malibu, so they don't mm -hmm. necessarily live in, in Beverly. Okay. What uh, is actually... Um, still there is um, Rodeo Drive. So Rodeo Drive, if you, para aquellos que tengan visa, que algún día tengan visa, no compren nada nunca en Rodeo Drive. Por favor, háganse ese favor. Everything, right. everything in Rodeo Drive is 200% more expensive. Like if you want oh. to have, if you want to get a phone and let's say it's the newest iPhone and it goes on the regular market for $1,500, there you will have to spend $300 because it's Rodeo Drive, because it's the Apple store in Rodeo Drive. If you cool. go to um, any store, for example, let's say that a burger in the US, it's normally $8. Bueno, de hecho, aquí también. Al otro día me asusté, fui a Wendy's y me costó $8 ya la hamburguesa. But yeah. yeah, so a burger there, it was $8. Okay, so it was expensive for me because I was used to having burgers for $5 here. Um, yeah. And in Rodeo Drive, they go for $14. So don't oh. expect anything lower than that. No. <laughs> but yeah, God. if you guys ever go there, just go, you know, have a walk, maybe get, I don't know, an, an, uh, a bottle of water and just look around, but don't spend your money on Rodeo Drive because it's where rich people buy things just because they are rich, you know, they don't even oh. mind to pay 200% extra on, on their articles, but we... But They waste the money. Yeah, we Salvadorians, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Así que sí, si tienen alguna, alguna vez visa, o sea, sí, caminen por ahí. Yo les juro, Beverly, a mí me dio miedo. Se veía, o sea, como, como se dice la palabra en inglés, spooky. Sí, no sé si ustedes saben a qué se refiere cuando algo es spooky, pero es como algo que no me genera nada de confianza. That's how I felt. Because, like, trees were overgrown, the grass was overgrown, Um, the houses were painted white, yes, but the white was like falling down and, and it was like it showed cracks between the bricks and everything. Oops, so, my God. No, yeah, it was it was not good for me, at least it was not good. As embrujadas. 
<laughs> yeah, like haunted houses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, basically like haunted houses. Mm -hmm. Something that was pretty cool was the palm trees. You know, they, they had a, um, the way of, of palm trees and they did look great. Like, for example, if you like pictures, if you like, if you're like an Instagrammer and you want to take a nice picture with, uh, you know, that street or some streets of Beverly Hills, yeah, go ahead because palm trees are great. Um, but apart from that, nah. Y la otra cosa, eh, los, los cercos, o sea, porque de hecho es el único lugar que yo vi en Estados Unidos que tenía cercos, o sea, cercas así bien establecidas, eh, son con helechos, pero o sea, helechos feos y todo súper alto. O sea, que las únicas sí. casas que se pueden ver son esas que están así todas destruidas. O sea, es como que, no sé, les juro que yo Ups. de California, de la primera experiencia que tuve en California fue como que nada, no es nada como las pelis. You get, you get the, the, your, your, your feel like, like a hang. <laughs> yeah, I got the wrong side of it, honestly. Now, the second time I went there, it was better. And the third time, it was still better. But I never went back to Beverly. Just one time, and then it was like, yeah, sorry, but it's not for me. That's okay. nice. Uh, moving on, one more people. Una persona más, we're going to hear now from, from you, Sandra. Tell us. What is your okay. favorite aspect? Yeah, what is your favorite aspect about your city? Well, historical places uh, in downtown of the city uh, are very nice uh, because uh, we can now walk, go walking uh, without any fear because it is kind of safe over there. And be uh, some years before, uh, it was scaring to be walking at the downtown. But now, thanks. Thanks God and, and thanks to the president. Mm -hmm. Now uh, it's better. Okay. Now it's cool. better. Yes. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, because I think we are all thankful because of that. You know, even people who don't believe in on polit on politics or anything like that, but yeah. it is it is better now. I feel more like I am proud of my country now than I than I used to be. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Give to to Caesar what it Caesar's. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Uh, well, so you guys were asking about this. Estaban yes. preguntando acerca de estos, de los, de los knowledge checks de esta sección 3. Ya los tengo todos completos, así que solo vengo aquí como para darles copia. So we have <laughs> instructions. The first one is, um, read the following sentences, identify the relative clause, and then rewrite the same sentences at commas where necessary, and remember capital letters and periods. So we have in the first one. Bangkok, which is the capital of Thailand, has many excellent restaurants and markets. Okay, so here we have... Uh, um, ¿Saben qué? Antes de hablar de esto, mejor voy a hablar del tema, porque así creo que va a ser mejor. Después del tema, de cubrir el tema, regresamos a four, teacher, No, después, four? después del tema regresamos. Yes, explain, please. Sí, después the del tema four. regresamos a eso. Vamos a ver, primero, defining and non-defining relative classes. Sí, defining and non-defining non relative classes. The first thing, a defining relative class defines or gives essential information about a noun. So, what does it mean? Very simple. If we put it in simple words, what it means is that when you have a defining relative class, it's going to be the only piece of information about the noun. Okay, think about that. The only piece of information describing the noun. When you have non-defining relative classes, non-defining are going to be, um, well, moments or phrases or uh, sentences where you have two or more pieces of information, okay? So having only one piece of information, o sea, si hablamos acerca de eso, ¿verdad? Que tenemos solo un eh, trozo de información, we have the first example. New Orleans is a city, okay? So let, let's be clear on that. Yeah, sure, New Orleans is a city. But then we see where people go um, to celebrate Mardi Gras. Now, how can we turn this sentence into, or how can we add a non-defining relative class? So uh, let me get a chart and uh, do this here for you. So we have over here, New Orleans. Espérense que está en negro, ya lo voy a cambiar el color. So New Orleans, 
is a city where uh, people go. Teacher, sorry. Yes. You see only the, the screen of the platform. Oh, so that's what you're looking at right now? Yes. Oh. Ah, pues olvídenlo. Yo creí que estaba mostrando la pantalla. Stop. Sorry, stop share and let's go back to share screen now. Okay, ahora sí entonces. Oh, um, so, New Orleans is a city. Here we have this example. Ah, ya estaba agarrando copia entonces, va. Este. <laughs> so, here, this is the first one. No, yo ya lo había hecho eso. Solo una, me falta la cuatro, nada más de eso. Ah, vaya. So, New Orleans is a city where people go to celebrate Mardi Gras, okay? Mardi Gras is a um, celebration. It's like a carnival that they have. It's very similar to the Carnival of Rio. But here, what you do is that you have a lot of jazz music. And there's like a lot of parades and things like those, but it's, it's, a, it's a new topic, a different topic. Entonces, tenemos esto, ¿verdad? Esta oración solo contiene one defining relative class, o sea, una, eh, ¿cómo se llama? Una sección, nada más, que es de definición acerca de la ciudad de New, de New Orleans, ¿sí? Ahora, ¿cómo podría entonces esta oración convertirse o tener una non-defining relative class? Si yo después de decir New Orleans is a city uh, in the south of the continental US, ¿sí? Entonces aquí esta oración ya tiene dos diferentes um, piezas de información, ¿sí? Dos diferentes piezas de información. Tenemos la primera, que es In the south of the continental US. Y la segunda, Where people go to celebrate Barney Grass. Ahora, esta es otra cosa donde el inglés a veces nos viene a jugar bien sucio, ¿verdad? ¿Por qué? Porque si ustedes están teniendo una conversación acerca de um, ubicaciones de algunas de las ciudades de Estados Unidos, ¿sí? si ustedes están hablando acerca de la ubicación de las ciudades en Estados Unidos, ¿Cuál de las dos partes creen ustedes que sea más importante? Estamos hablando de geografía. Entonces, ¿qué podría ser más importante? ¿Sería in the south of the continental US o sería where people go to celebrate Mardi Gras? What would be the most the important first part? In the south, the first, in the first so, one. The first oh. one, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so if the topic was geography, the first one will be the pick one. The first one then will be the defining relative class. And the second um, class will be non-defining. Why? Because it doesn't add any information to the topic that we are discussing. Now, what happens if we are only talking about the city of New Orleans or if we're talking about um, touristic attractions in the U.S.? So we're talking about touristic attractions. The fact that the city is in the south is important. Yes, it is important, but it turns into an irrelevant point when we get to talk about the Mardi Gras um festival so the important section if we're talking about tourism is going to be where people go to celebrate mardi gras so that's how you're going to be able to play around with um classes and be able to identify which one is more important depending on what the topic is now we have the definition here uh an undefined relative class gives optional information about a noun not is to use commas so the only thing that is missing here is that um, it depends when or it depends on the topic that you're, that you're talking about or the topic that you're discussing to find out which one is the more appropriate defining class. Because here, for example, we have Seoul, which hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics, is well known for its shopping. You see that there is no relationship between the two different things. So this one, the fact that you mentioned, which hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics, means that that is a non-defining relative class. It's used another piece of information. Yes, it adds to the description. Yes, but it is not important on the description of the city of Seoul. So that's how you're going to have to... Um, to pay attention to the topic, to pay attention to what is being mentioned, to identify which one is the defining and the non-defining. So if we go back into the, into the exercises, you see that sometimes you only have one piece of information. If you have only one piece of information, it means that the sentence can just stay as it is 
and it will have only one defining um, relative class. But if you see examples like this, we have the, the, the second example. There are many temples and shrines in Kyoto, which used to be the capital of Japan. So the description of Kyoto is what is important. Okay, the fact that there are many temples and shrines in it. We are not discussing politics right now. We are discussing uh, history to some extent. Let's, just, let's say that we're talking about history, but we're not talking about politics. So some might, someone may say, but teacher, uh, the fact that it used to be the capital of Japan has to do with history. Yes, but it might not be relevant. Or let, let's just leave it at something simpler. We're talking about religion, okay? So if we're talking about religion or culture in um, in Japan, the fact that this one used to be the city doesn't the capital city doesn't have anything to do with religion or with culture. Okay, so that is what we have to take into account. Once again, it's going to be context. Sí, y por eso es que el, el inglés, o sea, en muchas ocasiones, no sé si ustedes han visto memes de eso, que ya en las, en las nuevas generaciones todos los profes de inglés la palabra que más usan es context, sí, pero es porque es quizás la mejor forma de ahora en día para explicar cómo es que algunas cosas en inglés suceden, ¿verdad? El contexto, sí, el saber qué se está diciendo, de qué se está hablando para poder entender algunas cosas, principalmente en temas como este o en temas de las, eh, las palabras, ¿verdad? Que son uh, pues muy similares en cuanto a, a pronunciación o escritura, o sea, va a depender siempre del contexto, de qué se está hablando para poder eh, de esa forma interpretar, ¿verdad? Qué es lo que significa. Así que vamos una vez más. So, defining relative classes are uh, found very easy when the piece of information is one, okay? Only one piece of information and it's important to the topic and it's important to the description of the noun. Sí, o sea, estamos describiendo el noun, es información esencial acerca del noun. Entonces, extra tú... information. ¿Hm? Extra information about the noun. About noun. Mm, extra information or, or essential information, explanation yes. about the noun. Yes. Because, yeah, for example, here we have Salvador is, a famous, uh, is famous for food and music that trace their origins to, Af or that trace their origins to Africa. Alguien puede decir que hasta aquí está bien, ¿verdad? El mencionar que Salvador es, eh, es famoso por su comida y su música. Sí puede ser, pero el agregar el hecho de que, o sea, tiene sus orígenes en África, aclara el por qué esta música y esta comida hacen a Salvador tan, um, tan famoso, ¿verdad? Por si no saben, estamos hablando de Salvador de Bahía, sí, en, en Brasil. Oh, that's why. Ajá, ya, yeah, es Salvador de Bahía. Sí. Les comento porque de hecho una vez a mí me mandaron un paquete y terminó ahí. Justo antier estaba hablando de eso con mi familia. Que una vez alguien me mandó un paquete a mí de Estados Unidos, ¿verdad? Y la muchacha solo le puso eh, El Salvador, o sea, le puso El Salvador, pero no le puso el código postal. Entonces, como no tenía código postal en el correo en Estados Unidos, ¿vieron Salvador? Vamos para Brasil, dijo. Y como a los tres meses le regresó el paquete a ella de nuevo a Estados Unidos. Pero sí. Ok, so yeah, this is Salvador uh, de Bahía. So, um, oh, so once again, let's go back to this. You know, when do we have, for example, information like this, we can say, but we can just leave it at it's famous for food and music. Yeah, but the additional information that is in bold uh, that trace their origins to Africa come to help and clarify why is it, why it is important. Ahora, entonces, eso es a lo que le tenemos que prestar atención, como les digo, a la importancia que puede tener esa información con el tema que se está discutiendo. O sea, y estos otros, si ustedes se fijan, estos otros comentarios no tienen nada en relación con lo anterior. O sea, si, dependiendo de, 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 también del contexto una vez más, porque, por ejemplo, más que todo en este caso, sí, en este caso más que todo, o sea, que el hecho de que Seúl haya sido el anfitrión de los eh, Juegos Olímpicos de verano del 88, no tiene nada que ver con que Seúl sea muy conocido por, um, por sus centros comerciales, ¿verdad? Entonces, o sea, es como que no existe una gran correlación entre una y otra cosa. Y asimismo, dependiendo de qué sea lo que estemos hablando, el hecho de que, ha, de que um, haya muchos eh, templos y lugares sagrados en Kioto, 
es difícil que tenga que ver con el motivo de que Kioto solía ser la capital de Japón. O sea, es muy probable que simplemente sea porque había bastante concentración de personas y mucha religión. Entonces, si es el tema que se está tratando, o sea, la religión, o si es la historia, si estamos hablando acerca de historia, en ese caso sería mucho más importante mencionar Kyoto used to be the capital of Japan. Entonces, ahí sí, ¿verdad? Quizás sea más importante. Si es política, lo mismo. Si estamos hablando acerca de, de las capitales o antiguas capitales de los países, then you can use that piece of information. Ahora, having this in mind, ¿sí? teniendo esto en mente, vamos a movernos ahora a lo que ustedes quieren. Mister, eh, sí. mister, I have a yes. question. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, when you use the com in the non definite, de defining, mm -hmm. in the non defining, when, when you, uh, how do you know when you use the com? The comma. The, the comma, comma comes, yes. the comma comes um, when the you know, when you notice, know after the noun comes one comma. If you notice here, we have uh, here just so, so yeah. comma. Okay, yes. and then the same here. I mean, we start here with an, in, an indicator and that's what makes this other sentence a little bit weird uh, because it will be way different if, if it simply you said Kyoto has many temples and shrines. Um, sería una, una estructura completamente diferente, ¿verdad? Aquí el caso es porque ten, iniciamos la oración con un indicador, entonces there are many temples and shrines in Kyoto, pero aquí está el noun, una vez más. Sí, el noun mm -hmm. es este. Y justo después del noun está la coma. Entonces la coma va a ir siempre después del noun. Y la siguiente coma, en el caso de la estructura regular, va a ir justo antes del verbo. ¿Sí? Después del noun y antes del verbo. Porque si ustedes se fijan, todo esto sí es cierto. Hay un verbo aquí, pero no es el verbo principal. Este verbo no necesariamente está relacionado con el noun. Sí, este verbo aquí simplemente es un, eh, el verbo que se utiliza para esa clase, para la, um, para la relative class, pero no es el verbo principal de la oración. El verbo principal de la oración sería is. Yes. Sí. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Entonces eso será después del noun y antes uh, del verbo principal. That Muy was bien. the case of the number four, but I did it like, like this, that, like that example, but over there is tricky, you know? Yeah, because it will be Bogota, comma, no, four, which is Bogota, situa comma. Yeah, comma, which is situated on high uh, plateau in central Colombia, comma, comma. has frequently yes. changing weather. Yes, that's what yeah. I did. Yes. So yeah, that's uh, so here. Sabe cuál creo que es el problema? Según lo que estoy viendo aquí es que el, el aquí aquí miren space. ese espacio. Uh -huh. El espacio después ah. de la coma. I can't believe it. No. No, sí. no puede ser, teacher. No. Es el espacio no, después no, de la no, coma. No, no, no. Teacher, me he no. quebrado no. la cabeza. No puede ser. Día no. con esos dos no. ejercicios. Y era es por el eso. espacio, teacher. Es el no, I did it. Yo revisé primero ese, ese espacio y yo lo corregí todo y nada. Are you sure? Hasta incluso, sí, hasta incluso pensé que teníamos que cambiar algún eh, orden de palabras. How Porque about... no me daba el nombre. ¿Qué tal la tilde? ¿Le pusieron la tilde? También. Oh. Yes. Yes, I did. Ok, pero la tilde y el espacio, Daniel. Ya, yeah, yo lo había puesto con tilde, coma, espacio. Ah, entonces sí, quítale yeah. el espacio. Ahí se lo voy a mandar Ajá. ahí en el chat. Ahí en el chat lo pueden yeah, copiar yeah. ya completamente como va a ir. Ok. Mm -hmm. Sí, esos, son, esos reportes a veces. Ese, esos reportitos pequeños, ¿verdad? Que alguien Igual no el... le corrió. Igual el siguiente, <risa> después de some, dice fo. Oh, yeah, en yeah, yeah. Mi, oh, en yeah, mi plataforma. Yeah. It's missing uh, the, the R. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, where some... Over there, fo. Montreal is a sophisticated city where some food... Oh. Sí. But some it, food. It, yeah, it, I mean... It is... How can we say it? It is all scrambled. Sí, o sea, la, la oración está toda, toda descompuesta y ese es el problema. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Where some found sería la cosa. Where some found oh. the best cuisine in Canada. Oh, yeah, where some. Sorry. Off. Es que era. Es al revés. Off. Uh -huh. Ajá. Where some of the best. Some of. Yeah, uh -huh. some of the best cuisine in Canada is found. Ajá. Uh -huh. So that's. Y, o sea, ni siquiera tenían que cambiarle nada, fíjense. I know. When I wrote no. off. Only, only was wrong, but when I wrote four was good, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So the only thing you had to do was basically to uh, to add the comma. So Montreal is a sophisticated city, and that will be it. You know, that's the uh, basically until uh, until here is where the defining clause uh, has to get to. To uh, it's a sophisticated city, comma. And then this is part of a new topic or part of a different topic where you mention food, it's going to be just something different. It's not going to have to do anything with the fact that Montreal is sophisticated. Entonces, ahí está el caso, ¿verdad? O sea, una cosa es que la ciudad sea una ciudad sofisticada y una cosa muy distinta es que ustedes puedan encontrar en esta ciudad sofisticada una o algunas de las mejores, um, ¿cómo se llama? De los mejores lugares, ¿verdad? Para comer en Canadá. Entonces, o sea, ese es el, eso es lo que, en lo que se tiene que basar eh, la idea de las defining or non-defining clases. ¿sí? Sí. Por ejemplo, um, si el tema fuese la comida, ahí no va a tener nada de relevancia el hecho de que la ciudad sea sofisticada, sino que le podríamos quitar esto y sería Montreal is where some of the best cuisine in Canada is found. ¿sí? Si fuera el tema la comida. Pero como aquí no necesariamente estamos hablando de la comida, ¿sí? But, y por ejemplo, otra forma, otra forma en la cual esto podría cambiar sería, si eh, fuésemos a colocar siempre, ¿verdad? El hecho de que es a sophisticated city, vamos a imaginarnos que lo vamos a poner siempre, que es a sophisticated city. Decimos entonces, Montreal, coma, a sophisticated city, coma, o bueno, en ese caso sonaría raro, sería a very sophisticated city, porque dándole uh, un poco más de énfasis para que también se valide el por qué estoy informando esto, entonces utilizaría, ¿verdad?, ese adverbio, very. Um, so I would say, Montreal, a very sophisticated, oh, sorry, Montreal, coma, a very sophisticated city, coma, is where some of the best cuisine in Canada is found. Sí, esa sería otra estructura, ¿verdad?, para esta oración, en el caso, con usted, en el caso que el tema sea la cocina. Sí, y que el agregar el comentario de que es una ciudad sofisticada sea el non-defining class. O sea, que simplemente eso es lo que está ahí como información extra, ¿sí? como un tema aparte, que simplemente, como lo podemos entender, es como yo aprovecho que ya estoy hablando para agregar esto. Sí, básicamente así es como funciona, ¿verdad? El defining class es algo importante. El non-defining class es como que, ah, un comercial, ¿verdad? Tengo la chance de hablar, pues voy a decir que, que esto es genial. Sí, entonces eso es lo que, lo que sucede con las, uh, las non-defining classes. Pero bueno, en, en la cuestión de la plataforma, sí, ese era el error, me imagino. Eh, Daniel, ¿ya funcionó el número cuatro? Ya, yeah, sí, sí. ¿Ya? ¿Sandra, para usted ya funcionó? Ah, es que no, no he podido entrar, no me ha ah, dejado bueno. entrar. Ah, bueno. Sí, bueno. pero lo voy a hacer luego. Pero sí funciona, teacher. Ok, Ay, good. Sí. Eh, en mi caso quería, quería decir que sí. ¿Cuándo era la fecha límite para entregarlo? Porque por cosas de la universidad no, vi, no he podido entrar a trabajar las, las actividades. Este lo van a revisar, me parece que mañana. Okay. Uh -huh. In the I number... Think. Number... Uh, three? Number three, four, three, 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 eh, lo que especifican ellos como cloudy, foggy, sí. beautiful, eh. eso ponía no. yo porque <risa> Ay, es lo no. que, sí. las características que estaba brindando las la dos personas, ¿verdad? Sí. No. It's Igual climate, pues, architecture, landmarks, nightlife, and cuisine. <risa> Those are the things that they are defining no. basically. So yeah, the things that the, they find. The Golden Gate. I... <laughs> <laughs> the things they find to be interesting and interesting listen again inside the city features that Carlos and Vicky mentioned so they mention climate they talk about architecture uh -huh. they also talk about uh, landmarks they talk about nightlife and they talk about cuisine o sea, está muy aparte de lo que ellos dicen sí, aquí lo que busca simplemente es ver su capacidad auditiva pues para poder identificar eso pero sí, o sea, entiendo completamente que ustedes sientan que es Exagerado, porque maybe it is, but yeah, I'm here to help, so no worries, guys. Here is climate, architecture, landmarks, um, nightlife, and cuisine. So yeah, those will be the topics or the things they are discussing, you know, in their conversation. All of them were good. Sorry. <laughs> no, oh, uh, all of them were were good. 
you know? Okay, yeah, yeah. The, the rest is very easy. Like, who likes the city better? We know that's Biggie. Uh, who likes to take pictures in different places? It's Carlos. Who is more uh, like a night person? It's Biki. Once again, who says that San Francisco is a great place to live? Will be Biki. So the one who is in love uh, with San Francisco is Biki. All right. So um, 3.8. Any doubts on 3.8? ¿Dudas en la 3.8 o, o lo tenemos bien en la 3.8? 3.8 is another yeah. listening. I think this one oh, is yes, easy, that, right? That's what's good. good yeah, this good. one is easy because there's no, yes. there's, there's no easy. typing. Yeah. Was easy. Oh. This one is also very easy. I don't oh, think yeah. you guys are going to need that any was, help with this one because all you easy. have to do, yeah, yeah, it's just reading and, and then just, uh, you know, deciding if it's true or false. So mm -hmm. very easy. There's no, yeah, it was um, very easy. No, it's no rocket science there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, any other questions you guys may have about these exercises? <laughs> well, I have, I've had all the almost four. Yes, the lesson, lesson four. <laughs> I have, yes. We're going to get there. We're going to get there, okay? We're going to get there, but next week. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, good, good. Yeah, we're going to get there. No worries. Ok, bueno, entonces, ya tenemos esto out of the way, ahora sí, ya vamos a poder movernos un poco más en esto. Um, pues ya llegó el momento en el cual ustedes piensan en ejemplos. Thank you, teacher. You're very welcome, no worries. Mm -hmm. Ok, so think about that. Think about things you may... Um, ok, let's see. Uh, public transportation. Vamos a poner ese tema. Public transportation. Transportation in uh, my country. In my country. Um, then we can say sugar prices. Yeah, sugar prices. Then we may talk about um, uh, smokers. Smokers. Uh, then um, we can follow with cable TV. Cable TV. Ok, estos son, eh, a ver, cuatro temas, ¿sí? Pensemos en ejemplos que podamos generar con estos cuatro temas que tengan que ver con defining classes and non-defining classes. ¿Qué se me puede ocurrir? Voy a dar un ejemplo. I can say uh, public transportation in my country is pretty unreliable. <laughs> unreliable. Okay, so that's that. Okay, that is a, um, oh, sorry, reliable. That's a defining um, class. Okay, I'm, this, I'm, I'm basically establishing that public transportation is something that I myself cannot rely upon. Okay, so public transportation is pre in my country is pretty unreliable. Um, mm -hmm. Now, how if I were to mention um, mm -hmm. something like, Let's see. Must we? Mr. Segovia, mm -hmm. in this one, we can say public transportation, which has the worst drivers in, in the sub or in, the, in our country. Uh huh. Public transportation, which, which has, has uh, the worst. Vamos a poner hosts, see, which hosts some of. Uh, some of the worst drivers uh, in my country. And then we have is pretty unreliable. See, so public transportation with hosts, some of the worst drivers in my country is pretty unreliable. Lo importante es el decir que el transporte público no es confiable, verdad? The, the fact that it's pretty unreliable. Now, mentioning that uh, some of the worst drivers in the country are between the lines of public transportation is just an add-on okay it's just a comment that doesn't necessarily add any meaning to the to the back of the um of the situation someone may say but it does yeah it does it might just add a little bit of meaning but it's not that it's going to change you know the, the the meaning of the fact that uh public transportation is unreliable just because i mentioned that it has some of the worst drivers in the country. Um, it might be, for example, that we are talking about 
how to evolve public transportation, then maybe mentioning that the drivers are bad might have something to do with, uh, with finding a solution. Now, how about sugar prices? Any ideas you guys may have with sugar prices? Okay. Um, Así como precio dulce, teacher. Sorry, oh. no. No, serían los... Suena como precio los, dulces. No, sugar prices serían los, los, los precios del azúcar. So, oh. there have been huge changes on sugar prices lately. Uh, all due to the uh, huge uh, views on land that farmers use to cultivate it, to cultivate. Sure. Yeah, to cultivate sugar cane. Lately, uh, the eggs are very expensive. The what? The eggs are very, mm -hmm. are very expensive lately. Yeah. I mean, what is not expensive lately, you know? <laughs> what is still considered cheap? Honestly, guys, I didn't, I, I haven't really been through my mind to think about that, about the fact that back in the day when I was still at college, I will get a burger for $5 and I will get the best burger for $5. And now burgers are $8 at Wendy's. And I was so surprised with that. En serio, se los juro que ese día me quedé, ¿qué? Pagué dos hamburguesas y pagué como lo que pagaba antes para que comiéramos cuatro. Pero bueno, things that happen. Ok, pero bueno, aquí tenemos. There have been huge changes in sugar prices lately. Esa es la parte importante, ¿verdad? Lo que no necesariamente es importante es mencionar el all due to the huge abuse on land that farmers used to cultivate it. Sí, o sea, or to cultivate sugar cane. O sea, no, no tiene necesariamente la gran relevancia en el hecho de que los precios hayan subido. Pueda que sí, a la larga, si analizamos el tema, claro. O sea, le podemos encontrar conexión con cualquier cosa, ¿verdad? Pero en este momento tal vez no es necesario agregar ese comentario extra, el decir que, o sea, que el precio del azúcar ha subido porque los, eh, los, 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 los ¿cómo se llaman? Los granjeros, ¿sí? O personas que cultivan la, la caña de azúcar abusan de la tierra. O sea, principalmente por eso, por decir que abusan de la tierra. O sea, es como que es un tema aparte, ¿sí? Si fuese el tema la agricultura y, o sea, o la agricultura sostenible y los, qué sé yo, las multas que puede enfrentar un empresario que no siga las reglas, en ese caso sí, ¿verdad? O sea, los precios del azúcar han subido porque pues los empresarios tienen que pagar eh, multas a cada rato por todas las reglas que tal vez están infringiendo. Entonces, eso, ¿verdad? Ok, smokers, no sé ni por qué se me ocurrió este tema, pero a ver, pensemos, las dos ya las hice yo, a ver ustedes. Una, smokers, fumadores, sí. Fumadores. Uh -huh. Smokers. <coughs> bueno, voy pues. <laughs> Are a great danger to society, let's say. Are a great danger to society. Now, um, let's say that here we can mention who um who smoke no filter cigarettes yeah so smokers who smoke no filter cigarettes we ahí está smokers Sí, la idea principal es, smokers are a great danger to society si sí, o sea, los fumadores son un riesgo para la sociedad pero este agregado, who smoke no, uh, no filter cigarettes, perdón, esto tendría que ser pegado. There. So no filter cigarettes, sí. O sea, los que fuman eh, cigarrillos sin filtro, eso no tiene necesariamente que ver con la idea de que los fumadores, ¿verdad? Eh, son un peligro para la sociedad. Una vez más, les digo, o sea, este es el detalle, que si, por ejemplo, estuviésemos hablando acerca de los motivos, digamos, o las, las causas, 
que llevan a que el cigarrillo genere cáncer más rápido, probablemente sería importante mencionar aquellos que fuman cigarros sin, sin filtro, ¿verdad? Pero si la idea es simplemente hablar acerca de situaciones que pueden afectar a la sociedad, de, digamos, enfermedades que a veces uno se consigue sin necesariamente eh, ser uno el que fue descuidado con su salud, en ese caso no tiene que ver el hecho de que simplemente o sea, la gente fume uh, cigarros sin filtro. ¿sí? Entonces, a eso es a lo, que, a lo que se viene refiriendo este tema, ¿verdad? Hablar de que o sea, estos agregados, si bien pueden ser importantes para el significado final de, de, la, de la oración, o sea, porque lo son, porque tienen una función en ella misma, pero si a esta oración esto se le remueve, no hay ningún problema. O sea, la oración se puede mantener siempre sin ningún problema. Esto simplemente es información extra, información que tal vez no sea esencial acerca del de noun en el momento que estamos hablando. Entonces, yo no quiero decir que no vamos a hacer estas oraciones, porque no, o sea, no es eso lo que estoy diciendo, sino que lo que principalmente quiero que quede claro, ¿verdad? Es que esa información que se agrega, si sí, puede ser relevante para mí, sí, pero pueda que para alguien extra en, qué sé yo, mi audiencia, esto no sea relevante, ¿sí? Bueno, como veo que se, no, se, 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 no, se nos hizo como que me, se me querían dormir ya ahorita al final, el que anda sueño soy yo. Este, uh, vamos a ver, vamos a... Uh, 3.2, vamos a hacer eso quizás mañana, porque ahorita sí ya me pasé de tiempo. Entonces, eh, para mañana me traen una oración de esas. Good. Okay. Sí. Okay. Para mañana me traen una oración de eso. Mañana eso les voy a preguntar. No, de, no, no, indefinite. Sí, de, o defining and non-defining. Una con defining ah. y una con non-defining. Ok. Y ya veo que aparezcan unos cuatro con la misma. Gran Google. Ok. <risa> nah, <risa> just, ok. So, um, yeah, people, that is it for today. Um, Catherine, we are going to go back into that topic tomorrow. Please remind me so we can take another look at, you know, uh, whichever section is that you need to to get through and uh thank you guys thank you very much for your attention and participation on tonight's class i hope you, you have a really good night and see you tomorrow so bye, bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.